In this video we're going to talk about voicing a major chord and some of the things I think about when choosing where to put the notes. Let's start with good old C major and we'll just start with three pitches. So yeah you could voice a chord like that obviously it's not going to be too exciting especially in a jazz sense. That's just C major first third and fifth. The first thing we usually think about in jazz is adding a seventh and if I had to change one I'd change the fifth. The fifth often caps off voicings really nicely, but it doesn't give us any extra flavour. Adding the seventh gives us more flavour. Now we've got a first, a third, and a seventh. When you've got the first, third, and seventh in the chord, things will usually pan out alright. Now for more stability, we could put the root note down low. When we've got three horns in a jazz setting, We've usually got a rhythm section as well, so it's common to leave the root off so that we can have another pitch. I'll show you what I mean. That would be considered a C major 7 if the bass player was walking on a C major 7. It could be something like that for instance. And that means we get a 3rd, a 5th and a 7th and a root note from the bass and rhythm section. And that tends to lend to a lighter feel which we like in jazz. We can get a bit more exciting by changing this fifth for a ninth. It could be here or here, depending on what the melody is. There's nothing wrong with inversions when we've got the bass or rhythm section playing the root note. This is a Duke Ellington voicing. It's a B flat major triad and first inversion, with the rhythm section on a B flat. And in his famous ballad, Solitude, he has this voicing. It's a rootless D flat major 7, with the rhythm section on a D flat major. Some fun things to try are voicings in fourths. And what I mean by that is having the interval of a fourth between each note. So here we've got the seventh, third and six. That would be a C major seven with an added six or thirteenth. When you voice in fourths or quartal voicings, they can sound very open and fresh, but they aren't very settled, especially without a horn on the root note, like in this instance. So just be aware of that. It has a nice fresh modern sound. Here's another voicing of fourths. This time it's a C69. Let's talk about some more experimental voicings. If you wanted to try some extra dissonance, you could try something like this. Now that's just a C major 7, with a 7th, 3rd and root, but the minor 9th interval between the B and the C makes it a little bit spicy. It's interesting how much more dissonant this is, compared to when the outer notes are just swapped. It's the same chord, but it has quite a different sound. Putting the seventh next to the root can give us a bit of dissonance as well, and that's used quite a lot. Here the third on top helps to level out the dissonance. It could even be used in this octave. If the third were an octave down, I would think that would be pretty experimental, with a minor second between the top two notes. You wouldn't often see that. Now there's nothing wrong with six chords either. You just have to watch out that you don't evoke too much of the flavour of A minor. So make sure your rhythm section is marked with a C, if you want to be sure that C is the root of the chord. Low voicings like this aren't often seen. This one's a little bit muddy and dull. But of course that can be used to a certain effect as well. Gil Evans uses this voicing in Sunken Treasure for a super gloomy sound. But you'll notice there's no other horns above them and that helps keep some clarity down here. If you've got any questions leave them in the comments down below. 
If your chord is really spread out like this, It makes it hard for the horns to blend and sound as one unit. And if they don't need to sound as one unit, then you don't need to worry about this. But if they are supposed to sound like they're together, then a voicing like this is quite troublesome. There's over an octave between the two outer voices. Another example of this would be a voicing like this. These won't blend as well. Down here we've got a chord that will blend, and then we've got a note way above it. Now, this could be the effect you want, and that's okay. Please, break the rules. But if you want it to sound as one, then keep the spacing a bit closer. If I saw some music like this, I'd think that top voice was a melody over some chords. For this voicing, you could try something like... Like that. Or like that. This voicing does have fifths at the top, so it will sound quite open. But it has got way more chance of sounding as a unit. Okay, let's move on to four voices, or four horns. There's a straight triadic stack to C major 7. First, third, fifth, and seventh. Or it could be a C6. That would sound fine as well. As you add more horns, you can create lower, richer voicings. Here's a C6 down low. Or a C major 7 down low. And like we did for three horns, we could take the fifth out and replace it with a ninth. That's really common. You can play with where the third is. That's another super common trombone voicing. We've got a nice root, 7th and 3rd, with a ninth in between. You can put lots of stuff above that and it would sound good. That could be 3 trumpets above, for instance. It's still a C major 9. When you have a 5th down low, especially in a strong instrument like trombones, you can put all sorts of things above. It's quite an interesting effect. We could have two open sounding fifths. That's a very open sounding chord, and you'd expect it to move, not necessarily settle there. Here's another example with that fifth down low. This is a Gil Evans voicing from Fisherman, Strawberry and Devil Crab. It's really rich. We've got a root, 5th, 3rd, 5th, 7th, and 3rd. It's common with 4 note voicings to leave the root out as well, just like you might if you are playing the piano. This would be a F major 9 without the root. The rhythm section will be marked with F major 7. Voicings like that are really common. Quartal voicings with 4 voices work as well. Here's one. Here's a C major 9 with an added 6, or C major 13. Again, this will not have a settled sound, it will be very open and fresh. Here's another portal voicing. This time it just makes a C6-9. 3rd, 6th, 9th and 5th. When the 5th's on top like that, it just caps it off really nicely. And that's a pretty common voicing there. The third down lower adds a bit more solidity. Fifths can work as well as fourths. This is a C6-9 chord, but there's no third, so it could be major or minor. There's lots of major 7 chords in big band writing. Here's one from Gil Evans's composition, Gone. It's a nicely spread voicing. You can see there's no gap in the middle, and that keeps it nice and full and rich. Depending on how solid you want the chord to sound, you could omit the root. Here's a voicing from Duke Ellington's Isfahan. It's a D flat major 9. 
Let's try some more experimental voicings now. You could try something like this, C major 7 with a sharp 11. That would be quite dissonant and pointed. We've got a minor second in between two notes that are over an octave apart. Here's another option. Only having the interval of a major second at the top will always add some unsettled or dissonance to the chord. This can be fine, it just depends on what's happening before or after. Here's a C augmented with a major 7 and a sharp and 11th. That would sound quite unsettled and it evokes a G sharp minor 7 a bit with a G sharp and what would be its flat 3rd and flat 7th. But it's all possible. I'm just giving you some ideas and guidelines. You decide what rules to break. Here's an interesting take on a C major 9. We've got four horns and pairs voiced closely. Here we've got the 9th and 3rd and then the 7th and root. In the next video, I'll tackle major chords with five or more pitches. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below.